tips for early stage rehab from a nutrition perspective? Yeah, so just as your physical intervention is going to go through different uh, phases, your nutrition intervention is going to go through different phases to follow this as well. So obviously it's going to depend on the type of injury, the severity and severity, sorry, and also the individual. Um, In the initial phase, what we're really trying to do is support uh, tissue regeneration. uh, And this may be ongoing through rehab. So having sort of a constant and people talk more about this later, but having a constant touch point with like the medical team and physiotherapy is really important. Um, so we can actually see how the athletes progressing through their injury, because that's essentially going to, um, it's going to inform our intervention. Um, so then we're also going to try and attenuate the effects of immobilization. So this is essentially changes in body composition. And again, this is going to be covered by um, Ben a little bit more later down the track as well. Um, So we're wanting to minimise increases in fat mass um, and also um, prevent or minimise losses to muscle mass. If an athlete, um, and no doubt you've experienced this before, where they're um, low in motivation and they understand the importance because you've educated them, but they're just really um, finding it tough to to do it, what what would be your advice for for athletes that are in rehab at the moment? Maybe it's long term and they're just in a bit of a lull in terms of motivation. Yes, that's really common. And I think there's, you know, it's obviously going to be a component of it, but really, again, going to that, you know, how can we support our body to heal and return to to play quicker? So kind of framing it around, um, you know, being able to progress through those phases more quickly, I think um, helps, you know, to support an athlete and, and, you know, obviously being sympathetic to what they're going through, but then um, just trying to sort of sell that, you know, if we get this on point, then hopefully we can progress you through these stages quicker. Yeah. And then, um, specifically, what type of ingredients do you want um, people that are trying for, to accelerate that healing process? Um, what are some good food groups and ingredients to purchase when you're doing your grocery shopping uh, yep. in rehab? Yeah. So again, that's going to depend on your injury type um, and yep. how long the injury is going to go for as well. Um, so having you know really sort of good conversations with your dietitian around that, um, how to support the different phases again. Um, so for example, your muscle tissue is going to have different makeup than collagen tissue which is in your connective uh, ligaments and tendons and then also bone as well is going to be a different makeup as well so really you know finding out from your dietitian how you're going to tailor it towards those specific tissues Um, so I would say the big thing that I would uh, suggest athletes to focus on when they are going through injury is that diet quality so you know there's Mm. there's no magical supplement that's going to speed up um the healing process it really is going to come back to having that good diet quality so for example if you're thinking of something um like uh, bone tissue, if you've had a fracture, obviously that's quite a long recovery period. If you're consuming things like high protein um, dairy or yogurts, for example, you're going to be hitting multiple goals. So you're going to be getting that protein to help prevent losses to muscle tissue um, and then also your minerals that are going to help support bone repair as well. What about um, for athletes that are vegetarian or vegan based? How does that differ for if they're, let's say, they've had a bone fracture? Yeah, so that's where it can become, you know, a bit of a a tricky kind of um, putting the puzzle pieces together for the dietitian. So from our standpoint, it would be trying to get those really high um, sort of calcium foods or calcium fortified foods. If we can't get it through, um, you know, dietary sources, then that's when we might look to go to supplemental sources. In your experience working with with, uh, athletes and specifically footballers, what are some common mistakes that you've uh, seen um, when they're in rehabilitation? Yeah, so the key one would be that being really restrictive with energy. So I think there's a bit of a concept and, and fear around sort of um, fat mass and skin folds and all that those kind of things. So um, often athletes will think, okay, I'm injured, I'm not exercising as much and I need to be really restrictive with my intake. Um, yeah. But obviously if we're trying to heal the body, we need to provide it with everything that it needs. So being too restrictive is going to, um, you know, potentially interfere with that. So Um, making sure that that is not sort of the mindset going into it. And again, seeing what we can actually do with our nutrition to support our body's healing um, is one of them. Um, Another mistake might be being too aggressive with anti-inflammatory supplements and things like that. So obviously there's a, it's a bit of a, got a bit of a bad rap, but as I said, it's involved in the healing process. So we don't want to blunt that too much in the initial phases. 